Many Android apps these days will expose certain business logic in web views within native apps. You can think of it as a small mobile browser like Chrome or Firefox that is able to render web pages but on your phone's form factor. It is quite important from a testing perspective to be able to cover the interactions of your native app with these web views as there could be some regressions that you might miss if this is not covered. Some of the examples where a mobile app might have web views are there might be help or support pages or marketing content or terms and conditions that needs to be updated quite frequently and should not need an actual app release through the Play Store to go through. One of the advantages of content over web views is that it can be very easily updated by your business teams without much overhead. Now, Espresso provides a library called as Espresso Web that provides an Espresso-like API interface over the Selenium WebDriver API. So before we understand how to write a web test, let's understand when you should actually write the web test. So if you want to cover the user journeys between your native app and web views and you want to test the interaction, then you are in the right place and you should write an Espresso web test. However, if your intent is to actually verify the web views content or functionality without any interaction from the native app, then you would be much better served to write a web driver or an equivalent test in another framework. The main reason for such an approach is writing a web test outside of Espresso would run much faster in case you only care about that assertion. So how does this work behind the wraps? Essentially, Espresso Web exposes a JavaScript bridge that allows Espresso to interact with the WebDriver framework. The main key component here is called as Atoms and you can think of it as something similar to the view matcher and view action classes that we have been dealing with. So Espresso Web basically wraps these Atoms with Web and Web.Web interaction classes. If you are familiar with a Selenium or equivalent framework, then you can just use find element or get element methods and use the familiar locators like ID, XPath, CSS, and class name, etc. So before we begin, we naturally start by adding Espresso Web dependency to our Android test implementation. Now let's understand the application under test. For this, we will be using the basic Espresso Web sample from our testing samples repository. Here on the left, you can see a simple web view wherein you have a label and you have a text box. And when you enter a text here, you have two options. You can either tap on change text that will update the label up top, or you can click on change text and submit, which is going to update the content in another web page. Let's say we want to test whether the web view inside the native app works. And the scenario is basically enter some text, tap on change text button and expect that the labels text is updated. This is pretty similar to the basic examples we've been seeing. The only difference is now we have to work inside a web view. So before we begin, how do you actually inspect your application? If you try to use the layout inspector from Android Studio, you will find that it won't be able to give you any detail about the app's structure. Rather, for this, we use Chrome Developer Tools. So to basically work with it, make sure you connect your emulator or device via USB. Ensure that USB debugging is enabled. You can enable it by going to the build number in your phone's settings and then keep on tapping on the build number until developer options is enabled. And finally, you can just type Chrome colon double forward slash inspect and you'll get a screen like this in your Chrome browser. Just click on the inspect button and it will open up a familiar Chrome developer tools that you might have used while automating Selenium tests. So you'll see a Chrome developer tool like this and this should appear very familiar to Selenium users. You have on the left a representation of the web page and on the right you have elements wherein you can see the XML DOM structure 
and with this you'll be able to find the locator you're looking for so now let's move on to actually writing our test before you can write your test you need to make sure that your application supports chrome debugging for this you need to add some snippets into your app's source code and we'll see this code in detail while looking at the actual test in android studio but for now just remember you need to add set web contents debugging enabled and set the build config as debug so that it's only works for your debug applications and not production and you also need to set the mobile web views settings to enable javascript as you can see on this so before beginning to write your web test we start with the familiar activity scenario rule give the name of the activity that has the web view in this case it's a web view activity dot class next before you can actually start writing your web test you need to enable javascript on this web view so for this case we use on web view method and we use force javascript enabled if your application has a single web view then you don't need to even give the id but if there were multiple web views you would need to find it using the with id matcher great so now that your before method is set up to enable javascript execution this is how you start your web test you first find the view on which you want to perform some action so here we use on web view instead of on view and the with id looks almost identical to an espresso test now the on web view method is going to return an object of web interaction which will expose web api actions and help us drive our web view it should come as no surprise that espresso web supports all the locators that you are used to as a selenium user and so you can use any of these locators while trying to find your elements next we want to find our element so we use with element method and then within it we pass find element which accepts two parameters the first is an actual locator type in this case we'll use id and then the second is the actual value of that locator in this case the id of the text box is text input we want to make sure that we clear the text before we type something so we call the perform method on top of this and just call the clear element method inside and finally once any text is cleared we then call the web keys method and then pass it the text that we want espresso to type finally we can again find our button so we use with element and the same find element method and this time again we use the id submit btn which we get from chrome dev tools and lastly we perform a web click so we call perform and web click method on it so after we tap on this button we expect the label to be updated right so we find the label using the same with element and find element methods and lastly once we have a handle to this label we we call the check method and within it we pass a web matches that accepts two parameters the first one actually gets the text from the label using using get text method and the second we check that the value that we get actually contains the string that we typed using contains string again you would be very easily able to go and see how these method definition looks like and use the specific methods for your use case now let's fire up android studio and actually see this in action so we go to our testing samples and under espresso web basic sample open our project okay now that the build is done let's just show you the application under test So here you can see the application under test. I can type some text, click on change text, and again click on this. That basically opens the text in a new web page. Let's take a look at the app source code. So if we go to web view activity, let me collapse the emulator for a moment you can see that i have added the set web contents debugging enabled we have also set javascript to be enabled 
and there is a bunch of code to make sure that we are able to launch our web view such as being able to get the intent url load this particular url and we initialize our web view client in in the web view since set web contents debugging requires kitcat version plus thus we add the requires api annotation and say it needs to be a version greater than or equal to kitcat now let's take a look at our test so here we start with our web view test we initialize the activity scenario rule with web view activity that we just saw we create a add before method so that for every web view we force the javascript to be enabled and these are the same steps that i described so here you can see we have the on web view with id and then we use the with element and find element methods to find our respective elements we can also go to locator class and then see that it supports all the selenium locators we use clear element web keys to type something finally finding the button click on it and then check that the response label has the expected text using web matches and contain string so this is our first test if you remember there was another test wherein we click on the change button and submit and it opened it in a new web page i have the same test automated here as well if you can notice it's almost identical except for the button that we actually click when the web page changes we don't need to provide additional context to espresso about the new web view it will be able to find on its own we just specify the actual element where we want to perform this assertion let me just run both these tests and that's it both the tests executed within 3 seconds quite fast right 